Why are some people saying keto is so dangerous for lupus, yet there's other people who are saying they have the most relief of symptoms because of keto? I'm going to tell you both sides of the story because I don't want you to be confused on the good and the bad of every type of diet. And today we're going to talk about dangers of keto and is it really dangerous? Welcome back to my channel, the best place for lupus warriors and family and friends who want to learn more about decreasing symptoms naturally. Everybody has a unique body, they have a unique microbiome in their gut, and that's why sometimes when you see a change in diet, you'll see better or worse symptoms. You're either detoxing or, and that's why it's worse, or it's really not for you and you're missing key nutrients or you're not doing the diet correctly. Maybe you're doing the bad diet. There are three types of keto diet dips, standard, target, and typical, and each would be beneficial to you depending on what your needs are. So it's really important to know what you're doing before you start doing it, and that's exactly what this video is for. Give this a like if you're excited, subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when I post a video each week. And I am so excited to share with you the cold hard facts on keto, and what is right and wrong. Let's dive into the specifics right now. So there are professionals out there who seem to give only the worst case scenario when it comes to diets, and it's important to do that. And I understand why they do that, and it might be because they don't want people to run and go do the fad version of a diet, so I get it. But it's really important to give you both sides of the story, because if you don't have both sides of the story, that means you're making an uneducated decision on what is best for you and your body type. Remember, you know you best. So have more confidence. Keep learning with me. Keto is dangerous? You know what? It actually is for some people. And when you don't do it correctly, here's why. Here's the quick and dirty version of the science behind keto. Your body prefers to burn glycogen, which is the stored form of glucose, because this takes less energy and your body always wants to conserve energy so that other parts of your body can use it more. Glucose is in carbs, whether we're talking about vegetables, fruit, complex carbs, they're all there white rice, potatoes, stuff like that. In keto, we don't wanna burn glucose. We wanna prevent our sugar levels from spiking and then giving us a sugar crash. And that's where you burn fat for fuel. Fat gives you a more steady burn, gives you more energy, and you don't get that crash with it. It's also really important for your brain, and a lot. it's also one of the most important things for your brain to have and to use is energy. It's a steady flow of energy that lasts longer, meaning no crash, no burn up feeling at 2 p.m. when done correctly, of course. Did you know our brain actually works better when we burn fat for fuel? And so does our ability to have reliable energy long term. Our body's so used to burning sugar. Our diet is made up of quick, fast, and easy. We want convenience, we want fast. That doesn't mean it's right. Just because it's normal and common doesn't make it right though. So when you start keto, that's where the whole um, keto flu comes in. You feel worse before you get better. Your body's shifting into something that it's you're basically shocking your body it's like what are we burning here is this fat where's my sugar i need my sugar and your body's detoxing it's pushing all those toxins out so it takes time and sometimes you do feel way worse as long as you support your body with a lot of water and also electrolytes salt potassium magnesium and a little bit of glucose and you will help your body get rid of and adjust a lot faster. So once your body runs out of glycogen, it starts to burn stored fat. Lipases are enzymes that breaks down the fat. So these fatty acids are released now. And then they go to the mitochondria of your liver where ketogenesis takes place. And these fatty acids go under an oxidation process. And molecules are formed, which makes ketones. And that is why ketones are spread throughout the tissues like your brain, your heart, your skeletal muscles. Insulin prevents ketogenesis. Carbs raise your insulin the most and that is why we have to avoid them. What I don't like about keto is it's full of dairy. And for people with autoimmune issues, dairy is something that we should be staying away from. Especially if it's highly processed. And I'll get more into that in a minute. The other challenge is with food sensitivities. And that's when we eat foods that our bodies are sensitive to, but if you took an allergy test, it would show up as totally fine. There are foods, there are tests out there that if you work one-on-one -on -one with me in my Mission Remission program, I will actually be able to show you 
what you should be staying away from and why you're having a reaction and during that time period of while you're in when you currently have autoimmune disease but when you're in remission it's okay to eat those once in a while because you're not reactive anymore so it's very difficult to connect the foods with the symptoms we are having sometimes because there, there could be multiple things going on and every time we eat a food that we're sensitive to, the body starts reacting. The body becomes depleted in the ability to protect itself from the food and the reactions become less specific, it becomes more chronic over time. So making us think that we're having symptoms of lupus, we're having symptoms of fibromyalgia, symptoms of Hashimoto's, and really it's the food that's triggering it. So our immune system is attacking, but we can prevent it if we just know what types of food we should and shouldn't eat. I'll actually be doing a video um, on dairy soon and autoimmune disease, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So with keto, there are two types of people who do keto. The ones that are obsessed over all the keto fads, and then there's ones who really take it serious and they've done their education, their research, and they figured out what type of keto is good for them. Here's exactly what the wrong ones do. They fall for all the fads. If you've noticed, I hardly ever jump on the bad wagon of any new products that come out or any new fads. In fact, I'll probably talk about it maybe a couple months into it because there's more research on it, there's more people who've done it, and we'll know more about it. There are some mouth-watering keto recipes that make you feel like you're not missing out on your pizza, on your dips, and all those yummy snacks. However, the crust is made of cheese, pork rind, and a lot of unhealthy fat. If you like what you see so far, subscribe and click on the bell so you don't miss out next week on our new video. Now back to the topic of the week. Does it sound healthy to you? These types of people who do keto also eat mostly hormone-filled meat. When you're trying to do keto, especially, or any diet, it's really important to not have meat that is full of antibiotics, to have meat from animals that are grass-fed, and hormone free. It's important to have fats and it's important to have meat, but we have to do it the right way. They forget about the good leafy greens and the vegetables. That's why a lot of people have constipation. Too much dairy, not enough vegetables, and, very, and, and different types of fruit that might not be good for them. Another issue that I'm guilty of as well, we all like our convenience, and that is our downfall. It sounds inconvenient to think of recipes and vegetables that we can have to change our recipes weekly. It takes time, I get it but we're not thinking of the long-term effects of how these diets can really hurt us. So it's important to take 30 minutes a week, just plan out what you're gonna have, rotate those vegetables, rotate everything that you're eating so you have a variety to build a good, healthy gut. Another thing is people keep doing it because they feel so good, and that's because they got rid of all the processed food. So of course you're gonna feel better in the beginning, but long-term, you might be making it worse for yourself. Now what do the, those who do really well on keto do? Why should we be avoiding dairy? Well, dairy is an inflammatory food. It produces mucus and inflammation in the body. When eating dairy, it should be limited to por small portions and maybe a couple of times a week. The real goal with keto is to have a lot of low carb vegetables, a lot of healthy fats like avocados, nuts, olive oil, um, butter or ghee, grass-fed and finished meats are super important as well. The right type of keto wares, what do they do? The right ones use a macro calculator that is specified to help figure out what types of macros they need for their body. And this will change over time as well. It should be adjusted every maybe month or so just to see where you're at because you will be losing weight, you will want to maintain, or maybe you want to work out more and you need higher counts of, of fat. Another thing to remember is if you have Hashimoto's, and some women shouldn't be doing this, and disrupt the hormone balance, especially if you have any estrogen dominant issues, dairy makes that worse. If you have Hashimoto's, dairy and gluten make that worse. I've talked about that in other videos related to the thyroid. Check one out right up here. Another factor is that your plate is full of delicious, nutritious, heavy, dense, nutrient-dense vegetables in a rainbow of color. Plus, they have healthy fat, oil, different nuts, and grass-fed and finished organic meat. Eggs, coconut oil, MCT oil, avocado, um, these all digest really easy in your body and it passes directly to your liver to be immediately used for energy, making it your body's preferred source of energy. MCT oils also great support fat loss and those who are highly athletic. What, what's the kind of keto that you've heard before? Have you tried it? And what was your experience? I'd love to hear it below. Overall, would I recommend keto long-term? No. I think it's great for someone who is diabetic, for someone who needs to lose a lot of weight, and they wanna do it the healthy way, absolutely. 
I think it's a great starter diet. I don't think it's something to use long term. Now, if you're curious about paleo and the dangers of that, check out this video right up here. Do you have a million questions about supplements? Why do so many functional practitioners recommend tons of supplements and then they give you nothing else, right? Well, let's talk about that way more because is it right, is it wrong? Also, are supplements even worth it? I'm gonna get into that with you on our next week's video. I'll be talking about probiotics, what types are useless, what doesn't even make it past your gut so you doesn't even help, and are you taking the right versions for you? So I'm gonna share with you the truth about supplements, and that's exactly what this health shop is for, to get you on the right track for your body type. So you don't wanna miss out on next week's video. Turn on the notifications and click that bell. I haven't already. In the meantime, while you wait for that awesome video next week, check out these two videos over here to learn more on how to decrease symptoms and to learn more about lupus and how to be proactive. Subs if you loved it, thumbs if you liked it, and as always, I can't wait to see you guys next week.